Welcome back to part three of sectioning this old engine. Uh, I'll bring you a bit closer in a minute. You can see how I've mounted the LEDs, but um, I made a dummy spark plug. I'll bring it in the camera. I hope the camera will focus on it. Out of um, oh, I'm focusless, stupid thing. It was a bit of a. It started off life as a bit of a uh, 60 mil stainless hex, and up inside in the end. I have put an LED. This will then uh, screws in the plug hole and illuminates, and it does seem to work quite well. I've tried it, and I've got where have I done with it? A rubber boot here, which I it's got a bit of wire putting it through it, so I can pull these through. So it'll look like a spark plug when it's all in in situ. I zoom you in a bit closer so you can see what what we're hopefully. It's a bit better, I think, we can see. So I've got four, we've got one in the plug hole, we've got one down through here, uh, and sort of trying to illuminate all the dark bits. So hopefully um, that'll make it look a bit better out in the daylight. And then I've got, if I come out a bit, I've got this here which is a 12 volt electric motor, if it will focus. There we go, and that turns at 65 RPM on 12 volts. My plan is uh, to use a motor speed control so we can slow it down. So one, it's just over one revolution a second. So I want to slow it down to probably half that so it's a bit easier for people to see. And I think that's going to end up, I've got to make some sort of drive coupling to go onto that M14 nut and some bracketry to go in there, to hold that on there. And then I can wire it all up and we'll get it all going. So that's as far as we've got. So I'm gonna go away and have a think about how to do this bit. And then we'll come back when I made a bit more progress. A few days have passed and um, sockets turned up, 14 mil uh, six sided socket is turned up to go on the, the crank. And I've had a bit of a think about it. And again, I'm making this up as I go along, but do you remember this bit of scrap I had kicking around? Um, I have no idea what it was part of. I've obviously made something out of a bit of it. Um, and most of this is going to get turned into swarf. Uh, I need to make this go on here and it'll end up uh, sort of a channel shaped in the end with just the sides cut off. So basically we end up with this socket on the end of here. Focus. That socket, I need to... Uh, make a piece to go in here that will sit on the end of that shaft and we TIG weld it in the socket. I think the socket's a little bit deep for what I need. So that ends up like that. And then that ends up on here, like so. Um, but just with a bracket that goes around, locates on the front of here and bolts on those two holes, so it ends up like that. It still leaves the points cover, ex or points assembly exposed. So um, I'll get set up on the lathe and we'll get going on this and see what um, we can turn. Well, we're going to make a lot of swarf. That's where we're going to be. I won't machine all of it, sorry, video all the machining because it's a lot of work um, and it won't be very interesting. But we'll, we'll get some swarf going. everywhere. Um, I'll machine this bit out, give me the basic shape that I want. I'll bring it up here so you can see it and see it will focus. Uh, I only actually need the sort of middle bit to give me that sort of stepped shape. That's all I can do with manual machines and uh, bits of scrap. So the next job is to get it set up on the mill and basically just mill off down there and down there. So we'll get set up on the mill and uh, I'll try and remember to video that bit. I, I need a camera operative. <laughs> they can follow me around doing this stuff. It made life so much easier. Right, let's get relocated. Right, the swarf from doing the back half. I've machined 35 mil off the back. I now need to cut 35 mil off the front. So we just left the middle piece. And even though this wall thickness here is 11 mil thick and it's clamped across the wall there and now, I'm a bit concerned that this might get loose and go twing and make a right mess and break my long reach cutter because I've got a half inch long reach end mill in there at the moment using it on the side wall to cut it, cut it off. So I'll set up and I'll take a few passes and then we'll come back when I've cut it. Hopefully it doesn't come out of the, um, where it's clamped down, because I've only had a narrow band in the middle to clamp it. Um, get 
that about somewhere there. And then we've got a zero off. We just touch off, there we go. Yep. I call that a zero. And I'm only running coolant because the alley when it heats up and gets hot it sticks to the cutter and the sharp edge of course it won't cut then um, so it doesn't get very hot it just stops it sticking basically Come over here, and uh, hopefully, Well that's it, and it didn't fly off, hurrah. So I'll get this off and get it deburred and we'll get on to the next bit. Right, loads of bits made, just got on with it. Uh, yeah, that's the bracket, as it is now. I'll call that machining to give me the shape I needed. Now, of course my next headache was, how do you put those holes in there uh, off of the motor here? when those holes are blind. Um, I did take the front of the gearbox off to see what's inside, and I was supposed to have metal gears, there are some metal gears, um, and some plastic gears. This shaft goes at 65 revolutions a minute, so just over one revolution a second. I have got a motor speed controller to slow it down, so you can see all them, somebody can observe all the thing turning over slowly. Um, whether this is up for the job, I have no idea. I did put more grease in here. There was just about a fart's worth in there. So um, if this proves powerful enough, which the way it's geared down, I don't know what speed this motor runs at, probably a couple of thousand. Um, down to 65, and there isn't a lot of load on it. But I basically had to, if I hold that on there like that, I had to put a notch in there because that little bit is a, is a, a, a gear. There's a bearing in there, and a, it's a bearing bush that it spins on. So um, that ends up like that. Uh, and the way I ended up just transposing the holes, um, I got some long M3 screws, a little focus like that. 
I'm going to focus anyway. Um, come on, you stupid thing. You've just got some long M3 screws that go in those holes. Screwed them in, then cut them off. So I ended up with little tiny spikes sticking out. Offered it up to my plate. Once I'd cut that notch and so it would all sit where I wanted it, and just gave it a gentle tap, um, which marked the back plate for me so I could drill through some clearance holes. And then the next bit was my socket that I bought. Focus, come on. That is an M14 six sided socket. I basically turned down a bit of M12 bar and made it a press fit in the 3 8 square drive bit pressed it in and TIG welded it. Now my hope was, leaving it to cool naturally, it would anneal the socket slightly because obviously these are chrome vanadium and I needed to drill and tap an M5 hole to put a grub screw in, which will then end up uh, pressing on this. Yeah, pick it up now, I know it's gonna come on. There we go, there's a, that land on there. We get my fingers out of the way. Basically you need that to, to press on that flat on that shaft. And the M5 is the right, it's the same width as that flat, so I'm hoping that will work. I have no idea, we've just got to try it. Um, and if this proves successful, this motor, then I'll order a spare because it's Chinese, so it won't last very long. Uh, and I you know, don't want to have to remake all these bits again for another motor. If, we can avoid it. So I'm going to get this lot degreased, cleaned up, lacquer this, spray the socket black, uh, etch prime it, and then matte black it so it doesn't go rusty. And then we can assemble it. Uh, I had to count up all those holes in there, so I don't need huge, great 40 mil long bolts, or Alan's socketed cap screws to hold it all on. Um, and then we can get it going, and you should be able to see all this up and turning at the last little right. bit. It's on. The motor's on. Uh, had it all working. Uh, I'll get you off the tripod and try and bring you in without being too Mr. Wobbly so you can see it all go round. We don't actually need the motor D speeder, it just gives you a sort of a ramp up to start it rather than just full 12 volts because it flat out it seems to be about the right speed. But um, I'll get you off of there and bring you in so you can see what's going on. Right, hopefully. You can see what's going on. The LED in the spark plug, full spark plug, works quite well. Um, I think the speed is about right. Obviously, this shows up better in sort of looking at it than it does on on the camera um, with the LEDs inside. So I'm hoping that's going to work out all right. Um, my next job is to order the acrylic box for it so that we can show it and people can have a, a look at it all working. So obviously being there's no lubrication other than a bit of oil I put on it as it sort of rotates. We can't have it going too fast, I think it would probably seize up. But um, yeah, the motor seems to pull about half an amp, 500 milliamps. Um, and then it peaks a bit when the cam flips over from exhaust. When you get TDC on the rock on the exhaust stroke, it goes over the inlet strokes, so it's compressing both valve springs. It seems to peak a little bit, about an amp, only momentarily. So we just have to see how that all works out. Well, this has been a really interesting project, actually. Never done one before, as I said. Uh, didn't have a clue what I'm doing. Uh, how long that motor's going to hold up? Uh, we'll just have to see. It's not pulling excessive current. I'll, get, I'll order a spare one and just see how it goes. Uh, we'll get a box ordered, the acrylic box with the base, so we can lose the wires down to a hole underneath, uh, put it on a table to take it to a, to a show, and uh, hopefully people will find it interesting, and hopefully you found the video interesting, you know. If in doubt, have a go, is, is, is the motto, really. Uh, I'll just say thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.